oh there's just something about color and sun that instantly just gets my mood from here all the way to there like i don't know what it is but mm. and this stuff i don't know where i'm going but please nobody should come and talk to me anyhow because What's up KDVAT and welcome back to the channel long time no see long time no tutorials I'm back can you tell I'm very excited can you tell my energy is just hi welcome my name is Priscilla I'm a Nigerian women's designer based in the UK and I just came in from Lagos back better than ever and i'm back with a tutorial this week and the tutorial is for this top and this jacket combo that i have on now this fabric i actually got when i went to balogo market in lagos and the prints i saw it i fell in love i didn't even i was just like i want this i literally bought the entire bundle of six yards and i ended up using almost everything for this project so in this video i share how to create the sewing pattern for this Alter neck tie back top I have on here. This is a crop top, but you can make yours longer or even do like a ver dress version if you add a skirt to the bottom. The jacket, on the other hand, is like this really loose, big, oversized kimono that I thought would make the perfect summer holiday fit. Imagine this with like a pair of white trousers or shorts or over your bikini. Mm! will look so 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 good so if you like to see how i made this set make sure to keep on watching give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed if you recreate this make sure to tag me on social media at kim dave designs and with that being said let's get into the tutorial <laughs> sorry <laughs> i need to For this project, I'm going to be working with the following materials laid out here. Some of them are out of the screen, but I have my pattern making tool, a chalk for making the kimono later on. And the fabric I'm actually using was one of the fabrics I got when I went to Balogun Market in Lagos, Nigeria. Make sure to check out that vlog if you haven't seen it already. It was so much fun. I am going to be going in to take my measurement for the top as well as the kimono. The first measurement I'm taking is the top length. This I'm taking from where my collarbone is to above my belly button because I want it to be more of a crop top rather than full length. I'm also going in to measure around my bust, around my waist because those would help me to create the top sewing patterns and just enable a better fit now if your top is going to be longer measure around the hem line width so that guides you when you create the pattern here i'm going in to measure the shoulder length for my kimono as well as decide on how long i want the sleeve to be my sleeve was on the shorter side it was like 10 inches long so it was like a boxy short sleeve I'm also going in here to just decide quickly on how wide I want the sleeve to be. I went for something really wide, 25 inches total, so it was really nice and full. The last measurement I'm taking here is the kimono length and I decided to have this go all the way down to my ankles. Starting with the top sewing pattern, I'm going to be creating the pattern first and I've cut out a piece of pattern paper and on it I'm marking the top length which ended up being about 12 inches from my collarbone to the hemline. Once I had that marked I'm going in here to square the point across so I have horizontal lines that I can mark my other measurement on. So this I'm doing for the top point and the bottom. The top is going to become the neckline, the bottom is going to become the hemline of the top. Now halfway between those points, I am marking a quarter of my bust measurement. This is just to guide me so when I draw in that slighted side seam, it covers my bust. Now along the neckline, I'm marking 2.5 inches and along the hemline, I'm going to be marking half of my waistline measurement or the hemline width like so. The next thing I'm doing in here is I'm drawing a slanted line that connects the neckline, goes over the bust line and does not necessarily meet that half waistline dimension it sort of like forms a corner point like this that particular point is about two inches tall that point i'm going to be attaching a belt to later on now i'm just going in here to add my seam allowance along the bottom the side the slanted edge which is going to be where 
that goes underneath my arm and connects back to the belt that ties on the back along the neckline i'm going in here to add about three centimeters of seam allowance so that helps me create the tunnel for the tie piece that this top has now this particular part i say you can skip but i did because i thought it would help this folding place be a lot easier so i folded this particular part backwards and then it helped me to get the exact shape that it should have if it's folded against itself what i found that when it was time to actually fold this in it didn't exactly sit quite right so you can skip that particular part if you don't want to be bothered with it now along the slighted edge i'm going to be marking away a 1.5 dot this would prevent that particular part of the top from gaping when you wear it i just have found from experience when i cut fabrics along slants which is usually on the bias you want to add a dart to just remove any gaping that might have happened the dart itself is a four inches tall and i'm just going in here to draw in the corresponding sides of the dart so it creates this triangular shape that we normally would see that darts have Once that is all done, I'm going in here to cut out my top pattern. This particular pattern would be cut on a folded piece of fabric. So I have one piece that covers the entirety of my front and even goes all the way to the side. And with the addition of the belt, I'm able to tie it on the back. Now this is what the pattern is looking like. I've added my grain line, my annotations, and I'm just going in to measure this bottom edge like so because that is going to help me create the belt pattern that will be attaching to the sides of the top now i've gone in to create the belt pattern the pattern is 26.5 inches long because this i'm going to be cutting and then folding on itself and it's six inches wide because i added seam allowance to accommodate for it's been you know folded stitched turned inside out before attaching to the side i also made a slim belt pattern this you can make wider or even smaller if you want to this would, would need to use to create like a ribbon piece that passes through the tunnel on the collar of the top and then it's tied on the back so these are all of the patterns i'm going to be needing for the top it's relatively straightforward and the pattern making did not take me a lot of time thankfully so once i had these out of the way i knew i could go ahead to cut them onto fabric i've pinned down my patterns like so and i'm just cutting out the front piece which you just need to cut only one piece for because once you cut it on the fold you have one entire piece that covers the entirety of your top half once i had that cut i went in to cut my belt the belt you would need to cut two so a pair one to go on one side and then one to go on the other side as well as the collar piece that goes in the neckline tunnel as usual i'm going in here to mark my dart point on the wrong side of the fabric once i have the point marked with the help of a pin going through that point onto the fabric and i'm marking that point with a chalk I am able to know how much of the darts I am sewing in. This I've thankfully cut notches along the slanted edge on both sides. And once I have the darts pinned in place, I'm going to take this to my machine and I'm going to be sewing from the beginning up on till the point, remembering to do a back stitch to secure the seam on both ends so that way it does not unravel once I wear this top with time. After I was done sewing the darts, I went in to overlock around the entire top, so the hemline, the side, the slant, the neckline, because once I have the edges overlocked, I know I can go in to hem everything ready to be joined to the belt now i'm just folding the sides in like so i always like to add pins you can also press this down if you don't want to add any pins or just use those like fabric clips or fabric pegs to hold your folds before taking it to your machine once i had everything folded in place i'm going into a sew along the hemline along the arm curve because that's what those slanted lines are going to become as well as the neckline now the neckline i did last because you have to fold in the sides before you fold in the neckline to sort of like conceal everything nicely the neckline i'm just folding it in like so i made sure i had enough room in that tunnel to accommodate for the belt or the little collar piece i'm going to be adding later on you could even use a ribbon if you don't want to make like a collar piece with your fabric 
next up i'm going to be sewing the belt i have folded right sides together and i'm going to be sewing the bottom edge as well as one end close and then turn this piece inside out and press it flat so i'm sewing only one centimeter seam allowance because that's how much seam allowance i added to my pattern and then i'm going to be sewing one end close because that's going to be the edge of the belt i turned these pieces inside out press them nice and flat and this is what they are looking like the belt i'm going to be attaching to this end of the top and i'm going to be attaching the ends that i left open this i'm going to do for both sides after sewing them in i'm then going to go ahead to overlock those seams if you don't want to overlock it you can actually tuck that end of the top into the belt sort of fold this in such a way that you conceal any raw edges if you don't want to go down this sew and overlock route Next up, I'm going to go on to work on the collar piece or the slim ribbon that is going to help me tie this top around the neckline. This I have folded right sides together and I'm going to be sewing so I create a ribbon or a tube that I'll be able to turn inside out. If you don't want to go through this step, you can use a bias binding, you can use a ribbon or any nice cord that would be comfortable on your neck. To turn this inside out, I've attached a safety pin to a ribbon and I'm going to pass it through this slim tunnel like so. Once I make my way to the other side of this particular seam or this tunnel, I'm going to pull out the safety pin and then sew down the ribbon inside of the tunnel. What this is going to help me do is turn this thing inside out a lot quicker this is one method that i often use when i make slim straps or slim belts and i just ha want to have the process go by quickly rather than nibbling and fiddling with a very slim and tight tunnel once that is all turned inside out i am going to go to the end that has a ribbon and trim off any excess that might still be there and then on the other side i'm going to tuck it in about say one to two centimeters or one inch and then just sew it close so you have both ends of this collar piece nicely secured in place after stitching this down i took this to my machine to iron it nice and flat and this is what it's looking like this i'm still going to pass through the tunnel on the neckline using a safety pin you can do this by hand if your tunnel is a little bit wider but mine is sort of on the slim side so I'm just going in here to pass the color piece through so that finishes up my top. Okay, in terms of the kimono or the outerwear, I have laid out some material here. The length I'm working with is about 57 inches. That is to cover for hem allowance and then the drop that the shoulder is going to have i really want it to be nice and like full and long so that's why it's very long it's actually touching the ground for me but this edge is a folded edge and that side isn't the side is open and i think i'm just going to cut this straight onto the fabric because i've made a similar style in the past so i'm going to cut a v neckline and then open up the center front here and then the shoulder i'm going to drop it as a slant like that and then i'm going to leave an opening here and then join up the rest of the side seam so i'm going to do this for the front piece which would be this one that i would open up on the center front and i'll repeat the same thing for the back and the difference between the front and the back would be the shape of the neckline i think the back would just be a simple round neckline then the front will be a v a v shape that's the plan that is the plan <laughs> along the folded edge i'm going in to mark the front neckline depth mine is 10 inches this i'm just going to mark with a chalk because i don't want to create a sewing pattern for this piece once i was done doing that i'm going to mark the neckline width which is roughly 3.5 inches and i'm going to be drawing in the front neckline which is essentially a v shape that goes from the 3.5 mark to the 10 inch mark once i have that in place i'm going to slant the long metal ruler i have so that helps me draw the shoulder slant of this kimono the slant on the shoulder is seven inches below that top edge of my fabric and i'm just drawing in the slant with a chalk once I have that marked for my front, I'm just going in to cut out my front kimono piece, cutting along that shoulder slant. 
this max already have seam allowance included so you don't need to add any extra seam allowance if you are cutting yours and you are following my exact dimensions along that front edge i'm going to be cutting the folded side open so i have two separate pieces one for my left and one for my right to help me create the kimono for the sleeve opening it is 12.5 inches wide so when combined that comes up to 25 inches i'm just cutting in a notch here to cut the back of the kimono jacket i am going to be using the front so this is the neckline of the front the center front edges we have the shoulder seam and then the side seam is along that edge there the difference between the front and the back is mainly along the neckline the back neckline is this high compared to the front that goes this low and it's about two inches below the shoulder point here everything else is fairly the same the shoulder slant is the same and that shoulder slant is so that it just falls naturally along the shoulder of my body side seam stays the same i've also transferred the sleeve opening notch there so the sleeve is going to be open from there up until this point here and then i'm going to cut like a short sleeve that will attach on that edge that side that part is optional but i think i just want to add that for extra sleeve i'm just going to cut along the side and the hem as well it's the same length for the front and the back this fabric is just so so gorgeous oh like look at it mm, the perfect blend of like purples orange greens and blacks stunning i'm just going in here to cut my back neckline and my shoulder seam in place this i'm using my front piece as a guide so i don't have to draw in any fresh chalk lines i'm also cutting along the hemline i'm going to transfer the notch as well as cut out the side seam now I have my front and back kimono pieces here like so, it, the fit is really nice and boxy and I say it's kind of like one size fits all. The next thing I did here was I cut the short sleeves and this is what they look like, just little squares and it is 25 by 10 inches in dimension. So 25 inches long and 10 inches wide so it fits into the sleeve opening. Starting by joining the shoulder seam, I'm putting right sides together of my front and back kimono pieces. I'm going to add some pins there so that helps me to keep everything in place. I'm going to do this for the left and the right side. So I'm joining my front pieces to my back piece which I have cut on a fold. I'm going to be sewing the shoulder seam first on a one centimeter seam allowance this i'm going to repeat for both sides and after sewing up the shoulder seam i'm actually going to take the seams to my overlocker and just overlock those seams so everything is nice and tidy on the inside of this piece if you don't have an overlocker you can use a zigzag stitch or use some bias tape just to secure it nice and neatly inside once that is all done i'm going in here to pin the sleeves in place i'm putting right sides together and i'm going to pin along the top edge of the sleeve and match the bottom edge of the sleeve to the notch which i cut along the side seam this i'm going to do for both sides of the kimono adding the short sleeve just gives it a bit of extra drama and I think I prefer it with the sleeve if I'm being honest. So this I'm going to be sewing up on the side like so. I'm sewing right sides together and once I'm done sewing up the sleeve into the sides of the kimono which is essentially like a straight seam at this point, I'm going to overlock this seam. So overlocking just the part where the sleeve is attached to the side of the kimono piece i'm going to do this for the left and the right hand side and once i have the sleeve fixed into the piece i'm going to open it up in such a way that i match the sleeve edges and the side seams together like so i'm just going in to add uh, some pins so that way i have the points and the notches and everything matched up nicely to my liking then i'm going to be sewing up the side seam of the sleeve with one continuous stitch from that bottom around the corner 
down the side seam of the kimono this i'm going to do for the left and for the right hand side so that helps me to finish up everything nice and neatly when i get to the corner i'm going to leave my needle in lift my footer and then turn the piece so it's pointing in the direction of the side seam then i'm going to drop my footer and continue sewing up until I get to the hemline. Once I was done stitching the side seams of the piece, I went ahead to overlock it all in place. I overlocked the side seams, I overlocked the neckline as well. So along that front, the back down to the other side of the front, I also overlocked the hemline and just folded and hemmed everything to finish off this piece. Once that was all done, I went ahead to give my piece a nice press to relax all of the stitching and this is what the final piece looks like. I think I am most impressed with the print of this fabric. I'm glad I ended up creating this design. I wasn't really sure what to do with this fabric but I know I'm going to get a lot of wear out of this kimono. It is vibrant and has a lot of beautiful colors in it so I know I will be able to wear this with black, with white, with pink, with reds, with orange, with purples because the fabric has a lot of interesting colors in there. It's a really nice and loose fit as well. So it's one of those things that you can just drape over like a simple white t-shirt and blue jeans and it instantly just elevates your look. It is also something you could wear with a belt around the waist if you wanted that styling but the options are just endless. I also like how it works with the top as well. I might not wear it with the top all the time, but I thought it would be cool with the top. Now I would have made a matching bottom, but the kimono itself consumed a lot of fabric. I say the kimono took like four to 4.5 yards of fabric because of how loose and voluminous the fit is. So I didn't have extra material to make a pair of bottoms. I actually wanted to make a pair of palazzo trousers, but I ran out of fabric. So if you wanted to make like a three piece, a top, a matching jacket and trouser or shorts or skirt, you could do so as well. But for this project, I just ended it with jacket and top because I didn't have enough fabric. But I hope you guys enjoyed watching this project. This is my first project after the Back to the Motherland series. So I'm excited to get back into making tutorials again. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up. Leave your video suggestions and ideas as usual down below. And if you recreate this, please tag me on social media at Kim Dave Designs. And until my next video, have a good morning, afternoon, and evening wherever you are. Bye.